In this video, we are going to look at ionic bonding. There are two types of chemical bonding that we are going to concern ourselves with. One is ionic bonding and the other is covalent bonding. All chemical bonding, it's important to note, involves an electrostatic attraction. That's an attraction between something that's positive and something that's negatively charged. In the case of ionic bonding, the species that is positive is the positive ion, and the species that's negative is the negative ion. And next I'm going to discuss how a positive ion forms and how a negative ion forms. So, ionic bonding usually occurs between metal atoms and non-metal atoms. Now in the case of metal atoms, such as lithium, like I've drawn here, they usually only have a few electrons on their outer shell. When atoms bond, they usually bond so that they achieve what's known as a noble gas configuration. And this essentially means that they have a full outer shell of electrons. The reason being is that when an atom like lithium loses an electron, it takes a certain amount of energy for that electron to be pulled away. And it turns out if you pull away electrons that are very close to the nucleus, this requires far too much energy. And overall, there's just not enough energy gained when the electrostatic attraction takes place. So usually, metals lose all of the electrons in their outer shell, and non-metals, such as fluorine here, will gain electrons until they have a full outer shell. So what happens to the lithium's electron is it just gets transferred across to fluorine. The reason this takes place is because the fluorine, the protons in the fluorine nucleus, attract that outer shell electron. Now if I just draw what gets formed, so the lithium has lost an electron, so nothing has happened to the nucleus, and nothing has happened to the first shell of electrons. But because we still have three protons in the nucleus, and now only two electrons, overall there's a charge on this species because there's an extra positive charge. So we represent that with this small plus in the top right hand corner outside of square brackets. As the outer shell electron has been transferred over to fluorine, Nothing has happened to fluorine's nucleus and its inner shell of electrons. And the outer shell of electrons, apart from the new electron that it has gained from lithium. It is worth knowing that even though I've represented the electrons as a dot and a cross, they are in fact the same thing, it's just for representative purposes. Importantly, now because fluorine has an extra electron, we put a negative charge in the top right hand corner outside of the square brackets. So to recap, ionic bonding takes place between metals and non-metals. The metals usually lose their electrons, the outer shell electrons, and the non-metals usually gain those electrons. A really important definition is that the ionic bond itself isn't the transfer of electrons, it is the electrostatic attraction between oppositely charged ions. Remember, it's the attraction between a positive ion and a negative ion that makes up an ionic bond. Now we can look at another species, such as magnesium chloride, to discuss what's happened here, we start with the metal atom. We know that magnesium is in group 2, so it's got two electrons on its outer shell rather than just the one. If it's got two electrons in the outer shell, it will lose both of these to the non-metal atom, so it will become a positive ion. I'm not going to draw all the inner shells of electrons, we're just going to draw the ion and write 2 plus here. Just like we wrote for the lithium ion here that was 1 plus because lithium had only lost one electron. The magnesium is in group 2 so it loses its two outer shell electrons. And because it's lost those two electrons and so has two extra protons in the nucleus now, it has a charge of plus 2. With chlorine, we know that chlorine is in group 7 or 17. So like all elements in group 7 or 17, it has 7 electrons on the outer shell. Chlorine can only accept one electron to achieve its full octet. Now is the important part. We know that magnesium has to give away two electrons. We know that chlorine can only accept one. So there must actually be two chlorine atoms that form chloride ions in magnesium chloride. So the formula for magnesium chloride is MgCl2. Not because chlorine is diatomic and it exists as Cl2 molecules because chlorine can only accept one electron and magnesium needs to give away two so there needs to be two chlorine atoms that gain both of those electrons. If we look at another example like lithium oxide, well I know lithium's in group one so it'll transfer one electron away from a lithium atom to form a lithium ion. We know all elements in group one have one electron on their outer shell and lose that electron when bonding ionically. So they all form one plus ions. So the lithium ion becomes Li plus 
We know that oxygens in group 6 are 16, so to achieve a full outer shell of electrons, which we will say in this case is what it does, remember that there are exceptions to this rule, but we're just going to say it for simplicity reasons that they all obey the octet rule, which is where they have a full outer shell of electrons. Oxygen being in group 6 or 16 needs to gain two electrons. So oxygen will always, when it forms an ion, will form a two minus ion because it needs to gain two electrons. If lithium can only give away one electron, there must be two lithium atoms that give away their electron to oxygen. So there are actually two lithium ions that get formed. And so the formula for lithium oxide is Li2O.